Boss, how many times have I got to tell you to quit reading them machinery magazines around the office? I know, I know, but this is science. A fella's got to keep up with what's going on in the world. Look, can you imagine? There's an electrical aeroplane, flies without wings. I bet in 50 years from now you'll be able to fly without the aeroplane. What do you care? You won't be here in 50 years. You won't be flying either. But, boss, that ain't a scientific attitude. Now, you listen to me. You haven't earned a dime in a week. Are you supposed to be a bill collector or a professor? Oh, look, science is my hobby, that's all. Oh, yeah? Well, how would you like to spend all your time fiddling with that hobby? Oh, gee, that'd be swell. <laughs> all right, Marconi, you're fired. Oh, look, I was only kidding. <laughs> See, I'm laughing. <laughs> Can't you take a joke? All right, then. Get out and get this. Fred Dennis owes 164 bucks. <laughs> The money or the machinery? Chief, it's as good as in your pocket. Hey, does a guy named Dennis live here? Yes, right over there. And who are you? Well, I'm a bill collector, and he owes us money. He owes you money? Hm. How about me three months' rent? And take my word for it, if you don't pay pretty quick, he won't live here much longer. Oh, you don't know how to handle those guys. He's probably got a whole sock full of money. Maybe under the mattress. Do you really think so? Sure. Say, mister, I'm asking you a favor. Do you think you could get me rent for me? Well, now, that ain't exactly in my line. Oh, I... don't worry. I see that you get your share. Now you're talking. Just leave it to me. Come in. Is your name Frederick Dennis? Yeah. I represent the Acme Collection Agency. How about this bill? Oh, yeah. Now, I know about that. Well, why don't you pay it? Oh, I intend to pay it, if you give me a couple of months. A couple of months, you've been owing it for eight months already. Well, I know, but if I can get this machine completed, I'm sure I'll have enough to pay you. Listen, brother, I don't want to hear any of your sob stuff. I'm here to get either the money or the equipment. Which is it going to be? Well, it looks like it'll have to be the equipment. Now we're getting someplace. Well, here, wait a minute. All this doesn't belong to you. What are you talking about? Well, I made a lot of these parts myself. Well, take them out. I'll wait. What is this thing, anyway? Well, this is the simplest receiver ever made. Oh, a radio, huh? No, it's a television receiver. Oh, no, it ain't. You can't kid me. I've seen plenty of pictures of television sets in a radio magazine. Well, I don't suppose you would see one like this. You see, it's my own invention. Oh, well, you're an inventor, huh? Say, what do you call this contraption? Well, that's the televisor. Looks like a camera to me. Well, it is a type of camera, but instead of taking pictures, it sends them out on the air. What you mean, it sends out pictures without film or nothing? Yeah, it's very simple. All you do is focus it on whatever you want to take, turn the switch here, and it sends out a picture. If you talk, it transmits the sound. <laughs> yeah. Well, why don't you sell it? Well, it uh, needs some more parts, and. I haven't the money to buy them with. Oh. <clears throat> Say, a broadcasting company go big for a thing like this, wouldn't they? Well, I suppose they would, but what's the difference now? Well, uh, you see, uh, science is my hobby. And if I was to take them things back, now, would that be a scientific attitude? You mean you, you might let me keep the parts for a while? Well, uh, <laughs> something like that, uh, seeing as science is my hobby. Gee, you're a swell guy. Oh, that's all right. Uh, I'll tell the boss that uh, I'll fix it somehow. I'll say you blew town. Oh, this means a lot to me. I don't know how to thank you. Oh, forget it. What do you say we go out and have some grub together, huh? Thanks, that's nice of you, but let's make it some other time. I got some milk and stuff here. Oh, you can't invent on baby food. Come on, I'll get your feet that'll stick to your rib. <laughs> Besides, I got an idea. Uh, 
Hello. Good day, Mr. Dennis. How are you? Oh, oh fine, thanks, Mrs. Leary. <laughs> Park here a second, Fred, and remember what I told you. Yeah. It ain't the policy of the Acme to threaten people. But if you don't kick in with that dough fast, I'm coming up there myself and smack you right on the button. What do you want? There's a friend of mine outside there. He wants a job. So what? Well, he's a good man for you. He's fresh out of jail for beating up six fellas on 10th Avenue. And all he was doing was collecting a bill. Now, take it easy with him, Chief. He's a pretty tough bird. All right, send him in. Hey, Spike. This is uh, Spike, the fellow I was telling you about. Glad to meet you. You don't look like no bill collector to me. Next, Chief. Next. He's fresh out of stir, a little pale, maybe. That sounds like a lot of hooey. You look like a college kid. Beat it. Listen, you, I don't care if I work for you or not. I can get plenty of jobs, see? And I got a good notion to pop you for that college kid crack. Oh, wait a minute, Spike. Now, don't get excited. Don't hit him. Look out, Chief. You don't know what you're doing. Not bad. Not bad at all. Give him a list and put him to work. Why don't we fold up this joint and go back to manicuring? Well, I saw our old boss this morning. He said it'd be all right. Back to that place? No, thank you. Oh, how we could use a million dollars. I'll send for a hundred. Well, we can always huck you for a coat. We cannot. That coat is the last bit of front I have. Well, don't get excited. It was only a suggestion. This isn't the first time we've been broke. And I'd counted so much on that potato peeler to pull us through. I had a hunch nobody would fall for that phony gadget. It was as bad as the Blake automatic mosquito trap and the Blake system for learning Greek in six lessons. Aren't you the fair weather friend? Oh, you know I'll stick with you, Bobby. But we gotta eat. Honestly, we haven't had any money in so long I'm ashamed to carry a pocketbook. Even the chumps we know aren't putting out for mosquito traps. Did I hear you call our clientele chumps? Because they sympathize with my attempts to emancipate the American housewife? Because they understand my desire to teach every citizen Greek, and you call our clientele chumps. Nay, I'm ashamed of you. Gee, you've got a great line of gab. If we only weren't trying to promote funny paper inventions, we'd make millions. Oh, keep your chin up. One of these days, we'll hit something that'll put us on easy street. Sure. Oh, uh, hello. Uh, what can I do for you? I'd like to see Mr. Blake. If you're selling hosiery, pencils, chewing gum, shoelaces, or books, no. Well, I'm not selling anything, and, and I'd still like to see Mr. Blake. Oh, you mean Miss Blake, don't you? Well, I guess so, if that's the only Blake there is. Uh, well, what do you expect, an assortment of Blakes? Say, what is your business? I'm here to collect the bill. Oh, well, Miss Blake isn't in. Thanks. I'll come back later. Uh, Miss Blake? Yes? Uh, I'd like to see you for a moment. Your secretary said you weren't in. She said I wasn't in? Is this true? Well, yeah, but Yeah, there I... are no buts, Miss Collins. This has happened before, and if it occurs again, I shall be compelled to give you notice. I'm very sorry, Miss Blake. It won't happen again. See to that. <laughs> I'm in to everyone. Yes, sir. Won't you come in? Now, what do you wish to see me about? <clears throat> well, I'm from the Acme Collection Agency. I have a bill for you. A bill? Yes, I think our check is in the mail. Fifteen thousand? Why, that's ridiculous. I won't pay it. Oh, no. Oh, no, you... Oh, you, you don't understand. That's not dollars. It's bolts. Well, I won't pay fifteen thousand bolts either. I never heard of it. Oh, but there's uh, been a mistake, Miss Blake. I, I apologize. You see, those are just some notes of mine that I jotted down. I, uh, well, here, here's, here's the real bill. <clears throat> we uh, expect immediate payment. I see. Considerably less than fifteen thousand, isn't it, Mr., uh, Mr... Dennis. Fred yes. Dennis. Well, Mr. Dennis, I can't tell you how intrigued I am by this diagram. Uh, now, about that uh, bill, Miss Blake. Mr. Dennis, you can't fool me any longer. You're not a bill collector, are you? 
Well, not for very long, I hope. I mean, it's uh, not my regular work. I knew it. You're much too nice for this sort of thing. Oh, I wouldn't say that exactly. I have a friend who's a professional bill collector. Oh, I'm sure of it. What I meant was that you probably have a great personal ambition of some kind, a career you want to follow. Am I right? Perfectly. I'm really an electrical engineer. Well, how interesting. I thought it was something like that. Well, I've got to make a living and... And uh, about that bill, Miss Yes, Blake. of course. Uh, but, Mr. Dennis, let me ask you just one more question. What does this diagram mean? Oh, that's just a rough outline of an invention of mine. Invention? In what field? Television. <laughs> well, you must be clever. Our best scientists have been working on television for years. Yes, I know, but I think I have an entirely new theory. But can you prove your theory? Oh, this is not just a lot of talk. I'm close to finishing the actual machine. Really? Why, Mr. Dennis, that's very interesting. I'm tremendously interested in the advancement of television. Well, I'll be glad to explain the principle to you sometime. Oh, that's not enough. I want to see it at once. Shall we go? Oh, but, Miss Blake, about Mr. that... Mr. Dennis, you're not inconveniencing me one single bit. Well, if it does what you say it will, the entire industry will be affected. Mr. Dennis, have you a manager? Oh, no, I haven't. Then this is the luckiest day of your life. Remember, opportunity knocks but once. Did you say once? Excuse me. Hiya, Hello. Freddy. <laughs> oh, pardon me. I didn't know you had company. Well, that's all right, Rocky. Come in. Uh, Mr. O'Neill, uh, this is Miss Blake and Miss Collins. <laughs> I've been wanting to meet you for a long time. What do you mean? I never saw you before. Oh, that's all right. I'm glad to meet you anyway. These ladies have been looking at the machine. Oh, it's a swell invention, ain't it? Rocky's my best friend. He's liable to be a little prejudiced. Oh, not at all. I can hardly be called a friend of yours, and yet I think it has tremendous possibilities. Oh, thanks very much. Oh, I speak purely from a commercial standpoint, Mr. Dennis. You see, it's our business to take struggling inventors like yourself and market their products. We protect you from thieves and promoters and, what's most important, secure financial backing. I repeat, Mr. Dennis, this is a very lucky day for both of us. I'll say. You mean you're going to promote the money for me to finish the machine? I'm going to start the first thing tomorrow morning. last night. We're ready to stop manufacturing just as soon as you give the word. That depends on what news Standish brings. Let me out of here. Let me out. You can't hold me here. How long are you going to keep Tanner in there? Till the deal with Paragon goes through? just asked for you. Oh, thanks. Uh, put those in my office for me. What'd you find out, Standish? Just came from headquarters. The police haven't turned up the slightest trace of them. Years of research. Thousands of dollars spent to perfect television. And then our engineer and his assistant disappear. It's very simple. Turner and Griffin have taken the plans and are going to cash in on them at our expense. Why, that's inconceivable, Standish. Turner's been with me for 15 years. Mr. Curtis, we may as well face the facts. There doesn't seem to be much hope of finding out what became of them. I suppose you're right. We both know if we don't jump into television, Paragon faces bankruptcy. It's a serious problem. There's only one thing to do. Go and buy television on the open market. We've waited too long as it is. I'm afraid we can't stand the added expense. But if we don't, what are we to fall back on? Let me get in as many bids as possible on equipment and see where we stand. Go ahead. And I'll call the board meeting to consider them. Now, don't worry. We'll work out of this predicament somewhere. I hope so, Standish. You won't get away with it, Griffin. I won't let you. You can't keep me here forever.
open up at Standish. Wait a minute. You've got to keep Turner quiet, Griffin. You can hear him way down the road. Forget it. There isn't anyone within 20 miles of here. How'd you make out? Curtis is ready to buy. Told me to start in getting bids. You'll never sell Curtis back his own machine. I won't let you. He paid for that invention. It belongs to him. It's starting to get me nervous. I'll get out of here, all right. And when I do, I'm going to believe. I tell you, somebody's going to hear him. Maybe you're right. Anish, you handle those bids. Shade them any way you like, as long as you keep ours out in front. Thornton, get down and put the pressure on Curtis for a quick sale. Oh, by the way, get me some new darts. These are all worn out. Did you notice the shoulders on that rocky fella? I was there on business. Say, you don't really think that machine's any good, do you? I don't think it can squeeze orange juice. What difference does it make? It looks complicated enough to fool anybody, and that's all we need. <laughs> what could be more complicated than learning Greek in six lessons? <laughs> Look where that got us. But don't you understand? Television is sweeping the country. Everybody's interested in it, and practically nobody knows the first thing about it. That's where the chumps come in. Curtis would fall for it like a ton of bricks. Have to show me. I know I'm right. It looks like a million dollars. And he's a pretty impressive looking fellow. Uh-oh. So you noticed that, did you? <laughs> oh, I thought this was business. Oh, be yourself. And that, gentlemen, is our final price for installing complete television equipment in your 12 key stations throughout the country. Impossible. It's out of the question. Well, I'd be suicide to undertake such an investment. It's That's entirely too much. I'm against it. I agree with you. Uh, Mr. Thornton, you see how the officers of our company feel. Couldn't you revise your bid to a figure we could hope to meet? My associates absolutely cannot see their way clear to lower their bid. Why, well, it would take us at least ten years to pay off for something like that. And if things take a bad turn, standard equipment would be in a position to absorb our company. That's right. Gentlemen, I've closely examined other bids for the purchase of this equipment. And making quality my first consideration, I found Mr. Thornton's bid the lowest. And as assistant to our president, I feel that I should call your attention to the importance of an immediate decision to install television. Other companies in the field are far ahead of us. Any delay on our part now would be poor business judgment. Hello. How do you do, Miss Blake? Mr. Curtis in? He's tied up at a board meeting. Now, I've heard that one before. <laughs> well, believe it or not, this time it's true. All right, I'll wait. What Mr. Standish has just told you is undeniably true. But for the present, I think we must withhold our decision. And in the meantime, Mr. Thornton, I trust that you can get your associates to cut their price. I'm sorry, gentlemen, but these figures must remain final. Good day. Certainly, there must be some way of cutting them down. If I thought that were possible, Sandish, I wouldn't hesitate. Well, it's perfectly possible that Turner, his assistant, might show up yet. There seems to be very little chance of that. Well, if we want to stay in business, we've got to do something, and we've got to do it fast. I suggest we wait. We still have a little time. Anything can happen. Yes, even bankruptcy. Well, so, gentlemen, there's nothing more we can do. I'll call you just as soon as there's something else to discuss. All 
Yes, Mr. Curtis? Uh, Miss Waltz, get me some aspirin. Yes, sir. Mr. Curtis, Miss Blake is waiting to see you. Is she in again? Well, I'm not here. I'm out. Can you tell her anything? Yes, sir. Oh, Miss Waltz. You remember what happened the last time I refused to see Miss Blake? She came in through the fire escape. You'd better send her in. I believe it would save time, sir. Hmm. Miss Blake, Mr. Curtis will see you now. Oh, thank you. Well, 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 Mr. Curtis, my dear old friend, I'm so glad to see you. How are you? Terrible. And since you've come in, worse. Now, what do you want this time? Now, is that nice? I call on you for a perfectly friendly chat, and you accuse me of wanting something. I'm speaking from bitter experience, my dear. You're always wanting something. And that last venture you inveigled me into was the limit. A potato peeler. Pah. Oh, well, that wasn't my fault. So many unfortunate things happen, and don't you think I suffered, too? Yes, I know, I know, my dear. <clears throat> I promise I won't speak of business again. If you don't. You see, you don't trust me. Well, I do, my dear, I do. But I had such marvelous news for you. News? What news? Well, you've been so mean, I don't think I'll even tell you. I apologize, Bobby. Uh, what, what is it? I don't know. <laughs> Trying to rouse my curiosity, aren't you? Well, you won't. What is it? Well, if you insist, I'll tell you. But only on one condition. What's that? Promise you won't interrupt until I've finished. Now, promise. All right, go ahead. Do you know that I am the sole representative for a man who has the greatest invention since the electric light? Uh -uh. Remember your promise. And do you know that just because you're my friend, I'm going to give you the chance to invest $2,000 in it? For that measly sum of money, Paragon will have the option on the most efficient, practical, and economical television set in the world. Miss Blake, it cost me $200 to find out that people are still peeling potatoes in the same old way. It cost me another $200 to find out that you can't teach Greek in six easy lessons. And now you come here and ask me for $2,000 for a television machine. <laughs> Why, it's ridiculous. But this is something new. You've never seen anything like it. My dear young lady, I am confronted with the greatest problem I've had since I've been in business. Twelve years of research blown to the winds. All kinds of complications. Engineers missing. Then you come here and tell me you have the answer. Now, I'm busy. Go home. But isn't it worth the money to find out? Look how much you've already spent experimenting. No. Mr. Curtis, you're making a great mistake. This is the opportunity of a lifetime. Only $2,000. No. Paragon will be sitting on top of the world. No. I won't take no for an answer. No. Will you go home? No. I'm going to convince you of it's the last thing I do. Well, you're wasting your time. No. There you are. Two hundred dollars. And I'll charge it up to charity. It's not charity, Mr. Curtis. Here's your option. You will thank the day I came into this office. I'll thank you to get out. Why, just think. Your name engraved forever on the scrolls of history as the man who backed the first perfect television machine. You should be proud. What have I ever done to deserve this? File that, please. And charge the 200 off to research. Research? On what? A new television machine. The greatest invention since the electric light. Are you serious? Bah, she couldn't even make a potato peeler work. She? Oh, I understand. Interviewing a prospect. Working up an appetite, eh? With two eggs in the house. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Mommy, how much would you rob worth the body? <gasps> oh, two hundred dollars. All right, you've held it long enough. Oh, where'd you get it? At the Paragon Broadcasting Company. Curtis? Oh, don't tell me he fell again. It wasn't so easy this time. It took a lot of fast talking to sell that television idea. Well, you've talked us into an eight-course dinner. Where'll it be, the Ritz? You've lasted two months without a decent meal. You can hold out for another hour. I've got to see Fred. 
Oh, so that's why you're polishing up. Don't be silly. This is business. Yeah, I'll bet. You get 200 bucks and now it's Fred. You're not smart at all. It isn't Fred we need, it's the machine. Just a few dollars will keep us on the right side of Mr. Dennis. Mm, tossing the doggy a bone, eh? Exactly. But just how big is this bone? Oh, 20 or 30 dollars. Well, hurry up and I'll get dressed and be ready to go when you get back. And order a table at the rib. <gasps> Miss Blake, Hello. come in. I'm awfully happy to see you. You'll be even happier when I tell you the good news. Yeah. Won't you sit down? No, thanks. I can't stay very long. How have you been? Aren't you a bit interested in what I have to tell you? Oh, yes, of course I am, but I'm so glad to see you. I have a backer for your invention. Really? Oh, that's swell. He thinks this contraption of yours is a miracle. Oh, well, I'd hardly call it that. But it will be revolutionary when it's finished. In fact, he has so much faith in it that he's made a cash advance. Not much, but it's a starter. Oh, the amount doesn't matter. The important thing is that you believe in it. Of course I do. And I predict that there are big things ahead for us. I'm glad to hear you say that. It somehow gives me the feeling that, well, that I'm not alone in this. And I'll prove to you that your confidence in me isn't wasted. You talk as if this thing can't fail. Well, you, you don't think I'd accept money if I thought it could. Well, that'd be like stealing. Well, that's one way of looking at it. Uh, how much money will it take to finish this machine? I've got it all figured out. By buying the material and constructing the parts myself, I can manage on about $200. $200. Two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars. Well... Oh, don't worry. I, I didn't expect the money all at once. I'm lucky to be back on the machine at all. And I can't tell you how grateful I am. Isn't it a strange coincidence? $200 is just the amount Mr. Curtis advanced. Bobby, uh, I mean, Miss Blake, you're the grandest thing that ever happened to me. Oh, don't get the idea that that's anything. What's the mere $200? Pin money. That you, Bobby? Uh-huh. I've got a ringside table at the Ritz. Let's go. Oh, uh, May, did you say there were two eggs in the house? Yeah, why? Well, if you're hungry, you better start cooking them. Say, I'm thinking something. Well, will you please tell me I'm wrong? You're right. Oh, not the whole 200. Well, of all the unconscious jellyfish I ever saw, you take the cake. With a couple of streetcar tokens between us and the poor house, you throw a whole bankroll into the lap of a goofy inventor. Oh, I just couldn't help it. Couldn't help it? Well, if you were robbed, why didn't you call the police? Oh, I wish you could have been there. And seen his face and listened to him. I just had to give him the money. Now, isn't that pretty? I know what's happened to you. You're going soft. You're falling for the guy. Don't be foolish. After all, that money wasn't ours. Did we ever have any that was? Oh, let's stop arguing like a couple of kids. How do you want those eggs? Scrambled. And be sure and save the shells. We can eat those tomorrow. Be careful with that. That's the most expensive piece of equipment I've got. What is it? A cathode ray tube. Gee, ain't science wonderful? For. Let's try it. Oh, gosh, Rocky, I'm afraid to. What do you mean, afraid? Oh, I've worked on this so long. For years, I've done nothing but sleep, eat, and dream this machine. Yeah, I know just how you feel. I had a girl once, went through the same thing. She wouldn't work either. And was I floored. I don't know what I'll do if it doesn't work. Well, come on, we'll try it anyway. 
Flops, I know a shortcut to the river. All right, give me a hand with it, will you, Rocky? There we go. I'll take it easy. Uh, we'll lie. Wait a minute. Huh? All right, all clear. Okay. Yeah, that's fine, Rocky. Now let's get the televisor set. Now you understand what you're to do, Rocky? Oh, sure. Just turn this here switch. That's right, and be sure and take it easy. Now stand in front of the machine, wait for it to warm up, and then start talking. Well, what'll I say? Well, anything. Sing, dance, act. I don't care. Well, I would sing, only my verse ain't up to par. I think I'll just talk. All right, and keep talking till I tell you to stop. I'll try to pick you up in here. to say, I, I ain't much of an actor. Uh, all I know is bill collecting. And science is my hobby. You getting me, Fred? In case you didn't get me before, I'm telling you again. Science is my hobby. I got character and personality. And I like science. It's my hobby. How am I doing, Fred? In case you didn't hear me before, I, I'm telling you again, science is my hobby. <clears throat> you see, science is my hobby. I'd invent something of my own, only I don't know what. Now, you take a simple thing like the automobile. Now, I could have invented that, only a guy beat me to it. Uh, hey, what are you doing in there, Rocky. Fred? Am I talking to myself or what? Rocky! I'm running out Rocky, of words. Rocky, it works! It, it works, Rocky! Rocky, it's a success. It works. Come here. It works. Look! Look! Mr. Dennis! Mr. Dennis! <laughs> We're made! We're made! We're a success! I'll pay a whole year's rent! <laughs> we'll buy the joint! <laughs> yeah. What's going on in here? The neighbors is complaining! Let them complain! Let them do anything they want! We'll throw them all out! Goodness gracious! They've gone crazy! <laughs> Rocky, I'm gonna call up Bobby. She's been asleep for hours now. What of it? I'll wake her! I tell you. No, no, there's no doubt about it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't talk so fast. Is somebody uh, sick? Uh, Nobody's sick. Doctor. Keep quiet. Yeah. Yes, yes, we, we, we can show it now. Tomorrow, anytime. Is it a fire? Oh, nothing's happened. No fire, lady. Just a five-cent phone call. You sure no one was murdered? You're not calling the police? No, lady. No one's been murdered. Yet. Yeah. All right. Uh, goodbye. Now, Mr. O'Neill, about me rent. Oh. Oh. Wake up at work. All right, let me sleep. Where in the money? I tell you, we're rich. No kidding. Members of the board will be here at 3 o'clock. 
They all seem anxious to know what the meeting's about. Fine, fine. They'll get the surprise of their lives. <laughs> all this mystery has made me quite curious, too. Well, you may as well know, Standish. You remember that $200 you marked off to research? You mean the girl? I said research. That 200's the best investment Paragon ever made. I don't understand. You, you will this afternoon. We're having a demonstration with a new television machine. This afternoon? Yes, and if what that girl told me is true, we're no longer at the mercy of standard equipment. Why, it can't amount to anything. Well, I don't think they'd come here to demonstrate a fake, do you? No, it doesn't seem reasonable. <laughs> oh, of course not. <laughs> You'd better get temporary contracts ready, because if that machine's all that girl claims it to be, we've got to be prepared to sign. Yes, sir. <laughs> but how could I know? Curtis has given her money two or three times before and didn't dream himself that anything would come of it. We can't afford to take any chances. But the meeting's already been called. I don't know what we can do about it. If you don't, I do. Griff, you can't. Shut up. I got an idea. Let's hear it. All we're worried about is their machine. Yeah? They're going to show it at the office. Yeah? Then here's what we can do. 400 bucks? You're crazy. They give one of these away with every set of new tires. That's the price. Well, I ain't saying yes till I try it out. Well, I don't know about that. Now, wait a minute. You don't expect me to buy a pig and a poke, do you? I just want to drive it around the block, fella. That's all. Well, I guess it's all right. This demonstration better go over or I'll be pinched for stealing the truck. It'll mean more than that. What I'm worried about is how we're going to spend that first fat royalty check. Dinner at the Ritz for me. Other Ritz. You should get a load of Mahoney's joint. Now, there's real class. I've got other plans. <laughs> Pull a lot of wires to get permission for you to do this. If it works, I'll buy you the football field. Yeah, thanks. Don't worry, Bob. We'll put it over. See you later. Well, you understand what you're to do, Rocky? Ain't I been telling you all along, science is my hobby? How can I miss? Well, don't forget to turn the switches easy and focus on the clearest point of vision. Get some excitement, crowd yelling, good plays, anything. Leave it to me. I'll wow them. Where's this going? Paragon Broadcasting. All right, I'll take it up. Sorry, buddy, but you'll have to use the passenger elevator. Well, they sent us around here. Yeah, sure, for the baggage. But can't you read? Oh, oh all right. But you'll be very careful with it, as if it were my own mother-in-law. <laughs> nice work, Al. You almost had me believe in it. There was a cinch. Now for a nice slow ride up. Gentlemen, Mr. Dennis, our young inventor. How do you do? And Miss Blake, his manager. How do you do, Miss Blake? Pull a fast one, eh, Curtis? Oh, vision, Howland, vision. You should be congratulated. Not at all, not at all. <laughs> I'm banking everything on you two. You have nothing to worry about. <clears throat> well, all 
all set. <laughs> Who are you shoving? Can't you see I'm broadcasting? <laughs> With what, that slut machine? Yeah, oh. and it runs with slugs. I can spare one for you, wise guy. Hey, save that for later. We've got work to do. Well, that's right. Yeah, well, oh. here it is. Oh, oh, oh my. Nice. Well, rather a well, funny looking yeah, object, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Hmm. Complicated looking thing. Like anything we've seen, isn't it? Mm. Unusual looking device. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to announce the game myself. I'm experienced. You're going to announce. Well, who's playing? I don't know. Get a program. Quick, hurry. There they go. He tackled. A pivotal tackle by Kelly. Say, Kelly, it's Cohen. Say, who's broadcasting, me or you? I can't understand. Something's gone wrong. There they go. They're lining up again. There goes Murphy around left end. Murphy, it's Jones. So, this is the demonstration. Mm -hmm. the thing ever you wanted to see. I didn't do it. I wanted to see it there. Pretty curious. Uh, What's the matter, boy? What's wrong? Uh, I don't know. I, I can't figure it out. Why? Waste of time. Uh, gentlemen, gentlemen, please, please be patient. Yeah. Uh, Romero's got the ball. Gazzotti's with him. There they go. Romero and Gazzotti. What a day for the Irish. 50 yards, 60 yards. I don't know. Vision. Huh. Just a waste of time. Yeah. Oh, let's forget it. You'll go back to work. What do you want to do? She ought to blame for this. I should have known better than to have listened to you. If you come in this office again, I'll have you thrown out. And that goes for you, too. Now, get that thing out of here. I, I can't understand it. Worked last night. Bobby, you believe that, don't you? Oh, sure, sure. Better pick up the pieces and go home. Oh, come on, Fred. Lay off that thing for a while, will you? You've been at it all night. Oh, I'm all right. Here, have a little coffee. No, thanks. You think it might have got bumped around in the truck? No, but I'm going to find out what did happen if I have to take this whole machine apart. Yeah, I done that to a watch of mine once. I still got the pieces. I wonder if it isn't too late for us to commit suicide. Wasn't I a fool to throw away that 200? Well, I don't know. When you think of what we could have had if the thing had been any good. That's just the point. When did I start to believe in miracles? Well, miracles have happened. Fred's a pretty nice boy, you know. Don't rub it in. I'll admit he's good looking. He's sincere and ambitious. But am I supposed to give $200 to every good looking man who walks into this office? I have myself to look after. All right, all right. Don't blame me. Oh, I'm blaming myself. You were right. I did go soft. And now we're right back where we started before Mr. Fred Dennis walked into this office. Uh-oh, the hunting season's on. May is, uh... Yeah. Hello, Bobby. You know, something happened at the demonstration. Now, that's news. I took the machine apart and found that the cathode ray tube had been blown out. I was there. Don't you remember? Don't you understand? Somebody deliberately crossed the wires. 
People are always crossing the wires, aren't they? I know you were disappointed, and I don't blame you. The machine was an awful bust. But we're not through yet, Bobby. It can be repaired. Oh, that's simple. Repair it. Well, it's not as easy as that. The cathode tube has to be replaced. Cathode tube? Oh, yes. One cathode ray tube, a mere item of $146. What's the matter, Bobby? Let's get this straight, Fred. I'm a businesswoman. You came to me with an invention, and I got $200 for you. The demonstration of the invention failed. But it wasn't my fault. Oh, well, let's not go into that. I took a gamble, and I lost. Now, let's drop it. I see. I'm just a bad business investment. Well, maybe you're right. But I'm not going till I tell you how I feel. I didn't come here just for more money. I came to tell you what really happened, because I thought you'd understand. I thought the machine meant more to you than just a business transaction. But I was mistaken. I, I thought you cared. It shows you how crazy I was. I guess the only thing I didn't think about was the money. I didn't know it was so important to you. Let's forget it. Well, don't get the idea that I need you. I'll fix the machine, I'll show it again. You'll get that $200 you're so worried about with interest. Say, what are you crying about? Mr. Dennis? Yes. Package for you. Sign right here. Atlas Electric Company. Well, I didn't order anything. Well, somebody did. Will you please sign? Well, there must be some mistake. Say, mister, your name's Dennis, ain't it? Yeah. Is it costing you anything? No, but uh, I didn't... Well, I'm asking you like a buddy. I gotta get home because my wife has thrown a surprise party for me. Now, will you please sign? Yeah. Thanks, pal. I saw this before. I just bought it. Bought this rag? Mm -hmm. Couldn't resist it. It was cheap, too. Couldn't resist it. <laughs> well, I could, and in a dark room. Say, where's your fur coat? My a fur coat? Why, uh, I'm, I'm having it cleaned. You had it cleaned less than a month ago. Did I? Well, that's funny. I, I forgot. Mr. O'Neill. Good evening, Mrs. Leary. Oh, never mind the evening. You appear awful friendly with that Dennis chap, and I ain't seen me money yet. Shh. That's my system. You act friendly like at first, see? But do you think he's got it? Hey, that little lady ain't fooling anymore. Rocky, you're a prince. Well, thanks. You're but... a pal, a real friend. I like you, too. <laughs> oh, I knew I could depend on you. But where did you ever get the money? What money? Oh, now, stop clowning. I know you sent it. I got the machine fixed already. And it works, too. Look. It works? You must have got a new cath cath a new tube. Well, thanks to you. When I opened the package, it nearly knocked me over. Package? Say, who's crazy here, me or you? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, it was delivered here an hour ago. Didn't you send it? Me? Where would I get that kind of dough? You're not kidding me. Honest. Well, that's funny. I wonder who could have sent it. I got a pretty good idea. The girls. Yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute. It's a fire. Hello. Did you notice something go past? What is 
this all home week? It was swell of you to do it. Rocky says the machine is fixed. Is that true? All I needed was that cathode tube. You ought to go see Curtis. Curtis? It's worth our lives to go near him. We'll tell him the truth. He's bound to listen. All right. It's worth a try. But if we're not back in an hour, call the city morgue. <laughs> <laughs> What's the number of the morgue? Hello, Miss Walsh. We'd like to see Mr. Curtis, please. Yes, Miss Blake. And Mr. Dennis. Thank you. Miss Blake and Mr. Dennis to see Mr. Curtis? Yes, sir. If they're in this building another minute, I'll fire you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And remember, I don't ever want to see them again. Yes, sir. Mr. Curtis is dreadfully sorry, but he can't see you. I told you. Oh, Mr. Standish, we've got to see Mr. Curtis. Well, isn't he in? Well, yes, but not to us. It's a matter of great importance. I'm sure if he knows, he'll want to see us. Well, if it's that urgent, I'll see what I can do. Come into my office. Oh, that's awfully nice of you, Mr. Standish. Now, what did you wish to see Mr. Curtis about? We want to tell him that Mr. Dennis's television machine is in perfect working condition again. We can shorten 20 minutes if he says the word. Well, you know how Mr. Curtis is. He's pretty stubborn at times. Oh, I know. However, I'll see what I can do for you. Oh, thanks. It's in the bag. Shall I talk to Curtis or will you? I think we'd both better shout at the same time. <laughs> Mr. Curtis. Yes, Dennis. I've just gone over the standard equipment figures. I've managed to shade some of the cost, but you know we have to give our answer tomorrow. Hmm. I suppose there's no way out. Maybe it's for the best. I hope so. Anything else? No. That's all. Howland, Jones, Tully, Tucker, North, Holman, Jackson, Caldwell. Our troubles don't end with Curtis. We've got to sell these directors, too. And I'll bet all eight of them are from Missouri. I'm sorry. I did everything I could, but he won't see you. Well, I, I can't understand. He needs this machine. Unfortunately, Mr. Curtis is not of the same opinion. He's decided to buy other equipment. The deal will be settled tomorrow. Well, are you sure you told him the facts, that it works? Are you suggesting that I withheld the information? Oh, no, no, but it seems impossible. This means so much to Paragon. Don't worry, Fred. I'll get to Curtis before morning if I have to sleep on his doorstep. Oh, Mr. Dennis, give me your address in case anything new should develop. Uh, 205 West 192nd Street. I'll get in touch with you. Let's go. All right, just a minute, Fred. Um, may I leave a note for Mr. Curtis? Why, certainly. Thank you. Thank you so much. So there we was, wrestling like tigers. In a flash, he grabs my arm with his gnashes and bites right through the bone. Hey, you can see this guy. Uh, not there, honey, there. Then I grabs a stranglehold. I reaches for a cradle hold. Hey, I... lay off. I'm not interested in cradle holds. What happened to your father? Oh, yeah. Well, then my old man and my best friend done a dumb thing. They got into a fight with each other. What a spot for me. What was I to do? Well, what did you do? Well, blood is thicker than water, so I knocked out my old man. Did you see Curtis? No. That's a list of Paragon directors. Get the telephone number of every man on it. You're working for Paragon. It's a lie. You're Curtis's secretary. You're calling a meeting of the board tonight, understand? Not a word. We've got to show them the machine before tomorrow morning. Oh, well, we might get them all together, but after that last flop, who's going to make them see the same show? What about me? I ain't been collecting bills for ten years without learning how to make people listen. That's the idea, Rocky. You take the receiving set down there, and I'll do the broadcasting from home. Here's one, J.F. Howland, Hempstead 6231. Get it, May. Oh, well, what do I say? There's a special conference in the Paragon boardroom at 9 o'clock tonight. Well, I get it. Hello? Yes, this is he. Well, this is a fine time to tell me. Important. Well, I hope my wife thinks so. What? A meeting at 9 o'clock? Well, I thought that meeting was called for tomorrow. Oh, all right. I'll be there. It was easy enough to stall them at my office, but I have a hunch they're not giving up. 
If they get to Curtis, we can throw our deal in the ash can. What makes you think they're gonna get to Curtis? You know where he lives, don't you? Yes. Well, that's all we need to know. Come on. Say, Tucker, have you any idea what this thing is all about? I don't know. Curtis's secretary telephoned me and said it was important. Well, same thing happened to me. I thought this meeting was called for tomorrow. An hour's notice. I counted on the opera tonight. Where's Curtis? I haven't seen him. Well, I assure you, gentlemen, that I'm just as curious as you are. Curtis ought to be here himself any minute. Caldwell, what's the meaning of this? I thought it was my place to call meetings for this company. Just a moment. Here's the wire you sent me. What? Gentlemen, this is all a mistake. Someone has carried this little joke too far. Joke? I think there's no need for us to remain any longer. We'll hold the meeting tomorrow as originally planned. What are you doing here? Well, I heard you guys was looking for a television machine, and I'm going to show you this one. Isn't this the Dennis machine? That's right. I assure you, gentlemen, I knew nothing of this. Oh, you made those phone calls. And the telegrams, too. Why, this is ridiculous. Uh, get this thing out of here. Now, wait a minute, Whitey. Keep your shirt on. You ain't going any place till you see this machine work. Oh, I, I'll call the police. Oh, will you? Now, go on, sit down. Decompose yourself. Hey, Griff. How rough is this going to be? It all depends. Why? I was just wondering. Well, if you're worried, you can get out right now. We ain't got any room for you. Don't worry about me. I was only asking. Gee, I hope Rocky put it over. You ought to be telephoning pretty soon. What are we going to say when the show starts? Well, I could tell the Paragon Board of Directors that I love you. Well, that would only take a couple of minutes. Not the way I'll tell it. Uh, the whole thing is preposterous. It's even better than that. And she's all set. Honey, call Fred and tell him we're ready. <laughs> Keep the motor running. I won't be long. Uh, oh, that's Rocky. It must have worked. Get back in there. But that telephone's for me. I've got to answer it. You're not answering anything. Well, who are you? A ghost for you, too, sister. Somebody's coming, Griff. Hello? Mr. Dennis, hmm. I'll see if he's in. Keep your trap shut. Hello, he ain't here. He's not there. Well, I guess that about settled. Oh, that. now, wait a minute, fellas. Hold everything. Look, he'll be starting in a couple of minutes. All right, I'll get to work on that machine. Ah! Got it out! Why not look, fellas? You come all the way down here. He's bound to start. Honest, it's the best television set in the world. Turn on the switch. If you don't wait now, you're missing the chance of a lifetime. You fellas look like good sports. Give us that chance. Look! It's working. I told you. See? See? It's remarkably clear, isn't it? Huh? Yeah, yeah. It's really marvelous. Why, that's the best television I've ever seen. It's a very well staged fight. Stays nothing. That's on the level. I'm going up there. Ah! Oh, it's 
Stop crawling, buddy. Step on it, will you? Say, if you think you can do any better, drive it yourself. Curtis, old man, you got a winner at last. Watch our stock go up. Yeah. Gentlemen, Paragon is sitting on top of the world. Ain't that marvelous? Did I ever tell you science was my hobby? Is that all you can think of, looking at them? <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. 